Hey Circle Gatherers, it's Mist White Wolf here. Um, it's been a hot minute since I did a video. Thought I would come on here and share with everyone what I'm doing. And I'm standing like this because there is so much sun that it's glaring in my glasses and you don't need to see my huge picture window in my glasses. Uh, anyway, um, so I wanted to talk to you about something that I'm doing today. It's kind of special. Uh, I'm creating a sun altar on the first, very first, full day of spring of course yesterday was astara but astara can be celebrated uh between uh i think there's five days that you can celebrate it um anyway it's 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 based on the sun and astrological signs and you know where everything's positioned but honestly uh, the 21st of march will work as well if that's the day that you have in your head or the 20th whatever. Um, today is Sunday. It's noon time. Perfect time for me to talk about my sun altar uh, that I'm creating today. So I have a place in my house uh, that's kind of set aside from everything else. Uh, there's not a whole lot of activity back here. It's the most Easter easterly point of my home. Um, it gets quite a bit of sunshine as you can see because it's kind of uh, well, of course, the south is, I've got a lot of nice southern sun that comes in this way. Um, but of course, the sun rises in the east. But any kind of work that I want to do throughout the, throughout the daytime, as you can see, is going to get quite a bit of sun. So uh, there are some things that I want to do. I want to do some prosperity magic. I want to do some protection magic. Uh, this is the perfect place for that to kind of brew up. Now, um, I want to be careful here not to confuse a sun altar with an outdoor altar. You could have an outside altar that's specifically for the sun or for the moon or for the sun and the moon or just as an outdoor altar, whatever you want. I have an outdoor altar, um, which maybe I'll share someday, and I have a sun altar now. I might even have a moon altar. I'm just gonna play around with it because you could do, you can have several altars for different purposes. You can bring your ancestors in to those alt uh, altars if you work with your ancestors. You can bring the chakras in uh, to those altars if you work with the chakras. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, witchy woo-woo. It doesn't have to be this huge flamboyant thing. It, it could be, absolutely. It doesn't have to be teeny tiny. If you want a huge statue or fortuna uh, in, in the corner where you, you know, you pray for your, you know, you put your lottery tickets there, <laughs> you could do that. Uh, if you wanted a big statue of uh, uh, Demeter or, uh, you know, Athena, Apollo, you know, for protection, um, you, you could, whatever floats your boat, you could do whatever you want. Uh, you could have a, a Buddha here, you know, uh, if you wanted to specifically just work with the chakras, if you wanted to work with the solar plexus and the heart chakra, you could do that as well. Solar plexus for protection, heart chakra for prosperity. Um, some people work with deity, deity. You don't necessarily have to. You can work with animals. You could work specifically with specific ancestors. Um, if you had a provider in your ancestor line who did very, very well uh, for the community and for their family, you could put their picture up and you could ask them for their assistance whenever you uh, need a little help. If you're looking for a new job or if you're looking for uh, a home that you know you'll be able to afford uh, or if you had a protector in your family it doesn't have to be a man I had some pretty fierce protectors in my family it could be your grandma you could put her in the corner whenever somebody's attacking your kid in school uh, I shouldn't laugh when somebody's not being nice to your children if you wanted to uh, do a little magic now back that up with a little work too let's not Let's not play around here. Magic is magic, but you still have a responsibility to do the work as well. Uh, so if if somebody's uh, if something not right is happening to your children, anyway, I don't need to give you this speech, this song and dance. You should do something about that besides just working magic. But magic definitely adds some oomph to that, and you will definitely feel that behind you, whether it's a deity or a guardian angel or a spirit guide or your or your grandma who is coming with you and marching up the stairs to the school to speak to the principal to get to get shit done. Trust me, you'll feel it. Um, anyway, but uh, I'm getting off on a tangent here. But you could also use animals on your sun altar. Um, 
you could use uh, so for like if you wanted to use I'm kind of mixing and matching here but there are, there's a fine line if you decided that you wanted to work with Kernunus for anyone that works with Celtic deity uh, you could have deer antlers on your altar like I do uh, or if you uh, if you wanted to bring in some sun energy uh, from the crab and I did a video on the crab not too long ago. The crab is all about prosperity, but also about protection. It's a great multi-purpose uh, animal. And it also uh, represents crustacean, whatever you want to call it. It represents water as well. So if you're one of these people that likes to have elemental parts on your altar, the crab will, will, will do for both water and also the sun. Um, but uh, if you wanted to bring in the crow, you could do that. Uh, the crow also represents the sun, uh, and or the or the raven, or a peacock, or a bee. Now, as you can see, I have a little bumblebee here. And the funny thing about these birds, whenever you kind of look into them a little bit, is that they not only do they have uh, sun correspondences, but they also uh, have um, they work with the dead. So there's a little Celtic myth about if you ever want to get a message to someone, a loved one or a friend that's passed, that you tell it to the bees. Um, so it's very interesting. So that's a that's a Celtic myth with the bees. Of course, you know, you, I, re, I, re, I uh, recognize the bee with the sun and the sun, the sunflower. Uh, you know, they 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 pollinate. It's very it's got a very sun energy with it. Um, also peacocks and peacock is another one that uh, works with the afterlife. Very interesting how you can get two sides to uh, an animal, but these birds especially, well, maybe it's the birds and the, and the insects that I resonate with shockingly also uh, have a lot to do with the afterlife. But look at this, you could totally do shamanic work with the peacock. This is crazy. I was doing this today. I was like, wow, I need to sit down and spend some time with this peacock feather. Um, anyway, I digress. But there's an eye. Isn't it amazing? There's an eye, which makes complete sense why it would be, uh, you could work with the uh, with the dead, with the peacock. Um, okay, so getting back to it. So I've shown you, I've got, I've got some deer antlers. Um, that's for, for me, that's representing Carnunus. So that's a Celtic deity. Um, he's also, he's the, well, the green man. So he's for prosperity. Um, very, very fertile deity. Um, I have a candle, uh, an orange candle, of course, you know, orange representing the sun, but this candle is actually a, it's a sun candle that I had purchased a while ago. So it's just, it works. Uh, uh I have an orange cloth, as you can see, I have an ivy. And ivy is also, you can work with the sun with ivy. Ivy is for protection. And I can see when, when you start to think about it, ivy will wrap itself around things and grow around things. It, it can constrict. So if you, if you don't watch it, so of course an ivy would be a great protective plant. If you wanted a different kind of plant to work with prosperity, uh, you could work with, uh, I've got the list here. You could work with an olive, olive tree, if you were lucky enough to live near uh, some place that sells little olive trees. And if you can keep it in this kind of, well, in this hemisphere, <laughs> uh, we're in the nor northern hemisphere. So there's also other plants that you could get to work with for prosperity. Of course, basil, you know that. Uh, you could, even with cooking, I mean, you know, but if you're, if you wanted to have a sun altar and start some seeds, this would be the perfect place to start your basil seeds on your sun altar or any of the seeds that represent the sun or any seeds in per period uh, because you're going to get a lot of sun in a eastern place, eastern area of your home that has some uh, southern windows as well. Uh, okay, so getting back to this. So um, I also have a beautiful sun mandala that one of my friends had gifted to me. So isn't this gorgeous? So I'm thinking I'm probably going to get some little tacks to tack these up because I don't want anything to be touching them you know I don't want I don't want anything to happen to them and this is Athena 
Athena is a protector, um, a fierce protector. And she's actually a deity that I have worked with a lot uh, in the past. And I definitely feel her whenever I need her. Um, anyway, she's amazing. So I've got her here. I work with a couple of deities, actually. They seem to be Greek. I'm trying to branch out a little bit, but... Uh, okay, carnelian. This is raw carnelian. It's Well, it's not polished, I should say. I like raw um, gemstones. I, For me, I just feel like it, I can... I can feel their energy. Uh, so carnelian, let's flip to the page because I've talked so much that now I'm having a hard time remembering what it was I was going to say about carnelian. Okay, so carnelian is for um, a number of things, but communication. And the one thing that I've been using the carnelian for is focus and attention. I usually keep this on my desk at work, front and center. Uh, just, I feel it's energy and now I'm going to charge it up with the sun's energy, uh, and uh, today, and then tomorrow I'll bring it up to my, uh, my home office and I'll put it in front of my desk again. But no, this has been in, uh, part of my work for a long time. This one carnelian stone, uh, of course you can use it, the carnelian for all kinds of things for fertility. Of course, as the sun. That's another sun correspondent. Uh, you can use it for grief, for harmony, healing, inspiration, longevity, lust, manifestation, um, pride, protection, uh, self-work, shyness, sorrow, all kinds of things here that you can use the carnelian for. Uh, if you wanted to use a raw stone or polished stone or other stones for prosperity, there are a number of stones you could use for prosperity. I dropped my peacock feather, pardon me pick it up there are a number of things you, uh, stones you can use for prosperity some of them being uh, agate bloodstone uh, calcite herkimer diamond jade jasper red jasper lodestone and lodestone's interesting too especially if you have the stuff to feed it that's very powerful actually um malachite Again, I'm only picking and choosing some of these. I mean, there's lots of them that you could use. Salt also is prosperity, which makes complete sense because they used to deal in salt, uh, when I say they, uh, years and years and years ago, it was part of trade. Um, so you could definitely put salt on your altar. And actually, one thing I was gonna mention, um, I have still not burnt my Yule log. It's been, crazy. So today on Sunday on Ostera, still within the Ostera, few, few, uh, first five days of Ostera, I'm going to burn that um, Yule log and I'm going to use the charcoal for um, black salt. Black salt is protection salt. Well, that's what I'm going to use it for. Most people do anyway. So um, I'm going to make some protection salt, some black salt, and I'm going to charge it on my sun altar. Um, and I will probably sift through the charcoal, of course, you know, I'll grind it up a little bit to make a fine salt, but I'll keep some of the, um, charcoals, the, the larger charcoals for next year for Yule, whenever I, uh, light my Yule log. That's my plan. Right now, that's my plan. Um. So other things that you could do uh, with the uh, with your sun ultra uh, altar, if you wanted to work with your chakras, if you felt like you know your solar plexus need work or your or your heart chakra, you can certainly work with your sun altar for that. If you were going to make some medicine for those things, you could you could charge it on your sun altar. Um, if you were going to uh, make some oils. Uh, either for uh, anointing or even for your kitchen, if you're going to infuse some oils. You know, prosperity is more than just this. Prosperity also is in your heart. Um, and there's a lot of us that um, 
you know, when you're cooking, a lot of us actually, when, when I say the word witch, um, I don't want people to be afraid of that word uh, because there's a lot of, Hollywood has really done a number on, on the witch, um, but there's a lot of us who put intention, um, you know, into everything that you do, who use correspondences, who pray over food while they're cooking it, who pray while they clean, uh, that, you know, do a lot of protective magic for their protective things. I'm not going to use the word magic right now. I'm, this is, I'm kind of having a real moment, uh, for their families or for their friends or for themselves. Um, and that's, you are working with energy. You are working with your own energy to make a, make a change within the energy around you. And to me, that is my definition of magic. And to me, that is my definition of witchcraft. Um, anyway, and there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of witches out there and you don't have to use a label, but, but if this is something that interests you, working with items and things and energy and making things work for you, you know, rather than waiting for things to happen, then this is a path that you can definitely look into, step into, research, dabble in, you know, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of people out there that work with energy that have different beliefs, you know, um, Christians, atheists, Wiccans, Druids, Buddhists, blah, 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 the list goes on, all kinds of different people. Um, and putting intention into uh, the things that you do on a daily basis can be very rewarding and empowering. Um, and it's something that I think everybody should, should try. Um, anyway, so that is what I'm doing today. Now, what you didn't see before I came on to this video is that I cleansed this table with some Florida water that I had created. Um, and I have got some anointing oil, um, that I'm going to, um, anoint my table with. Now, you, you know, this is, you could use beeswax. You could use, you could use furniture wax if you wanted to. I mean, if it was, you know, kind of natural. Um, but you could definitely use beeswax if you have like a raw surface. Um, but I'm going to use an, an oil that I had made, some anointing oil. And I do have a little bit of beeswax. To me, um, I'm polishing it as a, I'm putting intention into this space that I will be working with it. Um, so anyway, and it's, it's a nice way to make something yours. And it's a nice way to kind of be very clear with what it is that you're going to do with the area and the space. And if you live with other people, make sure that you tell them that, you know, this is my space for this. And please don't disturb it because I'm, I'm doing real work here for myself and for probably possibly you and some of our friends and, and maybe even the environment, you know, uh, nobody would go into a church and blow out a candle that you had lit. So, uh, and you know, like I said, if it's a tiny little area, it should be okay. Anyway, it was lovely to see everybody. Uh, have a great day. And uh, again, go on outside, enjoy this beautiful weather and hope to see you again soon. Blessed be.